flying castle back to Waterdeep. No. Yep, you're back on the flying castle back to Waterdeep. With Verum, the Verum the White in tow. <coughs> we, we got a ride now? supposed to look for something else, too. Yeah, you get the... Remember that castle that you, you threw my turtle turned <laughs> dragon in <laughs> off of? No, I know, but they said they can take us as far as this place, and then they'll be really going to drop us off and take off, so I didn't know they were going to stick around a little bit. This is a perma-castle. He's helping out. This is nice. a perma-castle. We'll, we'll, we'll see how far his goodwill gets us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Probably uh, not that far. Why did you do this, Chrome? Reasons. <laughs> Reasons. <clears throat> All right. All right. Uh, you guys. Hmm? Oh, I was going to say, I believe for anybody who was reading a book, you said it would take us three days to get back and. Thus, we could finish reading our book. Yes. The end. Yes. The end. So, uh, it'll take you three days to get back because you can only go 200 miles a day. And you're going back to Waterdeep. So, Ooh. on the first day, nothing Chris... really interesting happens. Uh, Vaughn? Uh, huh? Just really quick, uh, there is, he does get to make a DC 20 strength check every day to try and break out of the Pokeball. Once a day. Once a day. Once a day. I need to get Varum's stats now. We'll put, Hopefully we'll put he doesn't the, break out we'll the Pokeball, huh? I'm going <laughs> to... We'll I like Jerry to think that I just to, talk to shit to him, him every day is... Yeah. <laughs> debuff him. Fuck shit. Fuck, do they not, do they not have the, uh... <laughs> okay, Varum doesn't have a stack block. Cool. That's weird. That's... That is weird. Maybe I can find one here. Quinton, did you delete your sleeves while you were off screen also? Well, I decided... So that shirt I was wearing, I'd actually, um... I usually... I get home... A bit late from work. Um, yeah. That was the shirt I was wearing underneath my dress shirt from, from oh, at work. So dude. I was like, I'm getting rid of that. <laughs> yeah, no. I really just need to have my massive guns for this. Yeah. <laughs> Do we need to get you a sleeves is bullshit shirt? Uh, I might as well because if I'm not like in a, uh, you know, if given the, the option, I will not wear sleeves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you do hear from inside your Pokeball, which is... Does it shrink down I, to I the size of a Pokeball? I it just wraps him up. So, it just, style. so you just have a giant dwarf-sized ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably this big. And you hear, This will never contain me forever! <laughs> Conk. <laughs> Maybe for another week or two. <laughs> <laughs> and then another day goes by, and the closer you get to Dagger Ford, you guys actually get to about right here. Uh, you're what, forty-five miles from Dagger Ford, or a hundred? <laughs> but you know, close enough to where you could see. Um, there's a feeling of foreboding as you get closer to Dagger Ford, and you see the pillar of smoke come from it, and. Uh, you guys actually fly by it, and about right there, halfway through your second or third day, you you guys can actually see into Daggerford, and it looks devastated. Uh, the regular cape that is like on top, one of the towers have been collapsed. The other one is just billowing smoke. Uh, most of the city itself seems to be frozen, disintegrated, or caught on fire looks like a series of dragons made a raiding attack upon Daggerford. As you that guys does not look good. fly by and get back to Waterdeep. That's not good. Do we see any evidence of dragons heading towards water? Like, is it like a trail of smoke and <clears throat> debris from Waterdeep or from Daggerford toward Waterdeep? No, oh, like um, gorilla style, just hit and run. It looks like it's just a gorilla style hit and run. 
like a, or a, not just a gorilla style hit and run. It looks like the, the many, many attacks that have been happening recently, possibly to retrieve more gold, but they're mm -hmm. getting older. They're attacking larger cities instead of remote towns. Yeah, that's really close to HQ. Very. Uh, but you guys get to, you guys get to Waterdeep, uh, land just outside the city, bring out Varim, who makes another strength save. <laughs> another two. <laughs> <laughs> so we just, just, just like, eventually I'll get out of here. Conk. Uh, and you just bring him with you into the cast into the uh, the castle of Waterdeep. Roll him like a dumb palace. beetle. <laughs> just roll him like a katamari ball. <laughs> he just picks up things as we. <laughs> and uh, Leosin's at his desk, just like doing papers. He just hears you roll in and looks up and goes, "I'm guessing the mission to the Serpent Hills was a success." Yeah. Cool. What is that? The we'll call it a Pokeball. <laughs> dwarf in a Pokeball. Yeah. You tied him up before putting him in the Pokeball, right? You know the idiom of in a nutshell? <laughs> okay. Cool. He's like a hamster. I don't know. <laughs> Can you... Largely beaten up before we put him in there yeah, by, I don't know. Was by he snake up? people. Was he beaten and tied up and then captured, or was he just beaten? I, I forget. It's been a few days. Yeah. Probably gross. Can you, uh, uh, he then snaps over to some guards and is like, can you release him? I mean, it'd be pretty easy to subdue him here. You know, right. I'm not sure if I know how to release him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at this. <laughs> what are they called again? The bands of what? The the iron bands of binding. Did they come with instructions? I, okay, wait, yeah, I get I can bonus action to speak the command word to uh to open it up. Is it, is it command Kazam? word pineapple? And then the, I, when you say pineapple, the ball of mouth. <laughs> like, I'm free. Oh, that's like a bunch of halberds point at his face. Then and he goes, maybe I'm not free. Um, puts his hands up. And Welcome then, to uh, Waterdeep. <laughs> oh, Waterdeep, grand. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to avoid this place. Uh, and then uh, Leosin goes, "Were you able to retrieve his mask?" He didn't have it on him. He did not have it. He didn't have it on him. Cool. I'm sure we can go put him into an investigation or interrogation room. Yeah, we'll do some advanced interrogations. That means uh, we like being convinced, Dorf. I think that means you're going to kick him in the balls. More like shave his beard. beard. Um, it's like a lot of different kinds of magic. I imagine one of them can just make him tell you things. I mean, yes, we know we do know of the, the spell Zone of Truth. Um, <laughs> Literally, just they—they they can't tell a lie, but they also—it doesn't force them to tell the truth. It's like, sure, I plead the fifth. So, so the torture is just kind of for fun. Well, no, the tor we're not going to torture him. We're better than that, though. Uh -huh. If he happens to fall into Zontarum hands, mm. Mm. the Auric, yep. I have a question, yes. and I have a—I <laughs> really shouldn't. This shouldn't be a question because I have the spell too. <laughs> If if you were to cast suggestion on him and suggest that he spill the beans, would that work? Yeah, theoretically that work. Like I suggest you answer any questions he has truthfully or to the best of your extent. So go help, so help you God. You know. Yeah, so the, the truth, the old truth, and nothing but the truth. I imagine that would you know, theoretically work. And then, you know, and then they just spilled the beans for eight hours. Yeah, I mean, that that would, yeah, I imagine that would work, but uh, you know what, I, I trust their methods. It seems, it seems like they have like a... Yeah, I'd rather kick them in the balls, to too. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, Leosin, have <clears throat> you heard from Burdusk? Um. Have you heard it? Burdusk hasn't been attacked, has it? We passed Daggerford, and it was ruins. The reports. I've never. I haven't heard any reports about Burdusk being under being attacked. Considering they attacked a different <laughs> town in the same area, the Green Green Nest. Right. Um. But that's what started this whole thing. Um. We have reports of dagger, uh, of uh, of Dragonford being attacked, and Daggerford. Uh, Daggerford, that's it. Daggerford being attacked, and uh, Luskin was under attack. Uh, maybe a few other small, small non-descript towns were attacked recently. They're getting more bold. They're attacking larger cities, but I. I I feel like as long as you show that your town doesn't have anything to offer to Tiamat, it'll be fine. Sure. Hope. Yeah, like blood and gold, you know, places like Waterdeep don't have a whole lot of those. He said sarcastically. Plus one. But, um, have you tried asking Verum about the, the mask? No, we left him in there. In his own... Juices, I guess. All right, all right. Um, hopefully he'll be quick to talk. And then you hear uh, down the secret, secret hallway is like, "Fight, fight! I'll tell you everything." He's just like, "Well, that was fast." <laughs> uh, hey, well, we're going to work on him. Have you guys found the uh, any evidence of the Dracorn? We heard it. I think that's where we we're planning on heading next. Everyone's mm-hmm. heard it. <laughs> well, I believe on our agenda, we were interested in heading north from here after fetching the dwarf. Mm-hmm. So you are you are heading to the Sea of Shards, from what I understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I was hoping to I was hoping to talk to you before the hand. Um, we have a few things that we want to give you. Uh, first and foremost, if in that chest over there, and he points to like this big ass wooden chest next to his desk and he says you'll need uh well you'll need uh winter gear in order to protect you from the cold in here are coats uh snowshoes things you need in order to traverse uh tundra and icy domains um Hopefully the boots in, in there will make it so that you don't slip. There's also climbing picks and other gear that will assist you in in such. Okay. Uh, other than that, we also hired a ship. Though you seem to have already have transportation. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much further we can treat the you could ask. You know, storm giant like a taxi I mean he said he was willing to help but I think we might have taken it as far as we can go okay okay uh, if it just in case I I would say you should maybe ask uh, though I have heard that the winds if the further north you go the more unstable the winds get maybe having something flying is not a good idea hmm also not the most it didn't drop us off close. We could Bridger drop you off close, but then you don't have you don't have because the ship we hired we hired uh, a famous ship called the Ice Skimmer. Oh. It's specifically designed to cut through ice flows, so that way it can quickly uh, traverse the Sea of Shards. Uh, Leosin, <laughs> nice name by the way. Um, you said that they had attacked Luskin. That's that's to the north. Is there yes. any chance that we would run into dragons while we're also going north? Possibly. That sucks. There was a dragon that was mentioned before. Uh, I have it here somewhere. Uh, no, that's Glaziel. Nope. Yeah, Glaziel's kind of dead. <laughs> Makoth, the Crimson Harper is up north. Oh, there is a boreal dragon up north. Yes. All right. It's furry and it breathes fire. Oh. 
I, I would be careful with that. I want a coat. Made of dragon fur. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me we have to go to the north? I mean, I've... Okay, I'm, so I'm from Neverwinter, and its name suggests not a huge fan. I mean, we were already, well, I kind of frozen in a bog once, and that wasn't a good time. You gotta tell me there's something more than jackets and picks in this bag. Uh, <laughs> jackets, picks, and boots in that bag. Oh, oh, right. It, you mean there's not some kind of magic doohickey which, like, keeps you warm? Uh, like, um, like a warmth stone? I think a you can buy, stone? like, heated mittens. If you go like this... <laughs> Your hands get warm for a second. I can cast Fireball. I work. <laughs> You're more warm than ever, he can't complain. Well, the coats and such are very high quality, and they'll probably last you a lifetime if you treat them right, but unfortunately, resources are a bit slim since we had to stop, you know, trading economically between cities, you know, to stop the cult from transferring their or transporting their gold through our uh, vast uh, trade systems and such. Brilliant idea, by the way. I wonder who came up with that. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm afraid this is this is all we can come up with in such short notice. All right. Well, beggars can't be choosers. I hope there are hats in there too. There are hats. There's everything you need for. Uh, there's like these weird mask things that like are made of. Oh, uh, like a balaclava. Like a balaclava, but like imagine something a little more bone-like. It's made of an like odd material, um, a mod odd material, and uh, it covers your face and uh, covers your eyes and protects you from the glare of the snow. Oh. I'm just hoping it fits. Oh, yeah. Kind of have giant wings. Orange. <clears throat> Maul. Yeah. That's where the magic comes in. <laughs> I'm bald. They, they're, basically, they're basically the... Uh, what's the clothes that you started out with, Ezra? The ones um, that make you change? B -b 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 glamoured, I believe. Yeah, they're glamoured <clears throat> coats, boots, and such. Was it not the cloak of many fashions? They adjust to your uh, to your physique. If you have wings, they make like little slits of wings that like have extra fur puffed into it, so that way the fur like kind of like sticks out with your wings. Hmm. Uh, if you got a tail, oh. it adjusts for said tail. If you're resistant to cold damage, which I guess you are. Uh, wait, are you? Vaughn, are you resistant cold damage or is it electric? Or lightning? A bit to cold. Alright. You, you shoot out lightning, you're resistant to cold. Mixed messages. I have questions. <laughs> He's very skeptical well, when you ask about his parents. Whose parents? It's time for another discussion. Let's move on. Everyone. I mean, everybody's got. Everybody has parent issues, you know? I, I don't. I, do my, I love my parents. Fine. My parents. <laughs> oh, my parents. <laughs> I like high five lamb. <laughs> well, my moms are great. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people have parent issues. Maybe not everybody. Okay. All the edgy ones in the group. I don't know. I'm I looking mean, at all of you, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure y'all got fucked up by your parents in one way or another. I left the troop, and they weren't very my happy about is that. Out but... about my mother is somewhere in a. In a city. That's all I'll say. Is it a nice city? Probably. That's good. Mm. Professor, I mean, do I... you remember your parents? I do! My father was named Alphage and my mother was Maria. <laughs> oh. Are they still alive? How old? Oh, I mean. No, they're dead. They're dead. Very, very, very old elves, I guess. Yes, they passed away 400 years ago. Oh. They were laborers. Nothing more. Oh. Well, they must have been something special. They made you. Oh. I'm too old for that shit. 
You're too old. You're too old. No one's too old for sincerity. <laughs> they did teach uh, me how to hunt. Okay, so we've concluded that only Vaughn's parents are messed up. Everyone else comes from completely stable homes. Uh, are Noted. we taking a boat trip? Or do we need to go ask our storm giant if he'll taxi us up north? I mean, I say we should at least inform our giant friend before we take on ship. Should we, uh, should we poke the dwarf about its white mask or lack thereof? That too, just in case. I think... The... Leosin, you guys are gonna do the mask thing, or do I mean you don't have to supervise everything, right? No, you don't have to supervise anything. We'll definitely find out if he knows where the mask is. Um, and we have the sending stone. Yeah. You do have the sending stone. I can't forget. Do I have that in my inventory? <laughs> <clears throat> But if you have any other questions for me, I'll, I'll try to answer as much as, as best I can. The the fro or ice skimmer is waiting for you in the harbor. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you all want to do before heading out to the frigid north? Can you send a letter to my mom's in Burdus? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Yes, of course. Uh, and your moms are who? <laughs> Exactly. I need mean, names and address and all that. Well, yeah. Um, my moms are Myrtle and um, I can't remember what my other mom's name. Sarah. Sorry, Myrtle and Sarah. And you can send it uh, courtesy of the um, the Temple of Agma in in Bredusk. My mom's a one of my moms is a cleric there. Temple of Agma. For dusk. All right. All right. Thank you. And do you want me to tell me that you're well? Yeah, I well, I prepared one here. I was just waiting until I got some place that had mail service. Okay. And he takes the letter, doesn't open it, kind of just like puts his the letter he was writing uh, <clears throat> around it and then puts that letter into an envelope. Does the whole wax seal thing. Does the official, uh, official, um, seal of the harpers for it you see like the har the the harp and the wax is made of white uh make wax is white but uh other than that do you guys where do you guys want to go now i uh before we leave i just want to stop by a shop on the way to the ship and just grab some health potions because i think that would be where we're going <laughs> 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 let's probably prepare um did we ever get that one potion appraised Oh, yeah. Well, we can ask the potion seller about this one. I sort of shake it. Is it glittery inside? All right. Like... All right. You, you see this old gnome with goggles on top of his head, brilliant, or hair that puffs out. And he goes, uh, puts down his goggles, and his goggles go, uh, the, one, the goggles on his right eye, just uh, four more lenses comes down, and he looks at it and goes, ah, um, it looks like a potent, a potion. <clears throat> Giant stripe. Oh, potion of frost I got giant you a potent. A oh, frost giant stripe. Okay, I thought you said storm giant. It's a <laughs> no, no, not storm giant. You see, you could tell because that thing floating in the liquid—that's a toenail. Oh. What does the frost giant give? Oh. Do you... Julian, do you have um? All your attunement slots filled? I do not. I'm just gonna throw this out here. <laughs> just gonna... Oh, crap. Oh, I opened up a config. Ah, never mind. What do I have now? Oh. What do I have now? My, uh... My strength is already quite high. Well, Everyone wants that fresh strike strength. Yeah, you can have it. Oh, I mean... I could hit something really hard with my wings, I suppose. Yeah, for her. currently the one I'm wearing right now. Uh, I'm is that is that something you're giving me or something? Is that a record? Yeah, I'm wearing. I just found it in the shop and I was like, if you need stuff, that's pretty yeah. good. I'm wearing flower giant. <clears throat> so, Ooh, but, a little wait. bit better. But mm. Vaughn, won't this potion stack on top of your belt? 
Uh, no. Like, no? Uh, okay. what, no. What does the potion of giant strength do? It's, it brings you, your uh, strength score temporarily for an hour or a minute to 23. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I got above the giant strength. Fire giant. So it increases my mind increases to 25. Oh, you're already over that. Okay. You know, compared to that magic interdimensional buy anything store, this potion shop is a little underwhelming. <laughs> is it a hundred gold per greater potion, or is it more than that? It's a uh, hundred and fifty per greater. A hundred and fifty. Where did you get food, Ezra? There was a nice cart. Oh. Selling salmon. Oh. Yeah, there's uh, in uh, Waterdeep, there's all sorts of street foods you could find. People just grilling foods and selling, like, sticks of fish and other uh, meats you could find, like kebabs. Oh, <laughs> I would definitely <laughs> eat a kebab. <laughs> I wouldn't. I spent 600 gold on potions. Okay, cool. That's a lot of potions. <laughs> Uh, change that potion from a potion of frost drying strength to a potion of, uh, say, fire resistance. Oh, so that'll be more helpful to you guys. Okay. <laughs> if you were to charge for a staff of healing, it's a blue item. What would you charge? It looks pretty high end. Ooh, ooh, staff of healing. Uh, let me pull out my. Mustaine magical prices chart. I'm gonna look at how much money it costs and how much money I have and inquire with Lem and the Auric if either one of them would be interested in an item like that. Oh also the Auric, we still have unclaimed the dragon vessel. <clears throat> the stirring dragon vessel. It requires an attunement slot, but that just means you're able to fill it with whatever. Anybody can drink it. Mm. So you can fill it. Second look at that. Potion. It's the the blue one. The dragon vessel stirring. Once a day you can make it be full of something. Jesus like Christ. Or beer. Going from Praetor to Hybatius is really uh, something on, on the HP <laughs> side of things, god damn. Yeah. Hybatius Gryffindor, fifty HP. That's healing. Okay, okay. Uh, if you go from this shop to a to a, a, a fantasy Costco, you'll see the exact same fucking gnome. <laughs> what you want? You work and, here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm everywhere, man. I'm in your head. Oh no! Oh, not again! Not again! <laughs> but uh, uh the sure. fuck you want? And you're sure you don't have a twin? Yeah, I'm sure. It's just me. How much are you charging just for, for staves convinced. of healing? My party doesn't have a cleric. 13,000 gold. Holy okay. shit, never mind. <laughs> How much? <laughs> Any way to bring that down a little? Mm. Or do you a favor? Um. Are you starting to blow a gnome? <laughs> uh, like, what, no. blow him up? Wait, you don't have lips though, Vaughn. I don't think you could do it anyway. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go into detail on that. And you whistle? Here. He has a tail. Oh, wait, what? Never mind. I'm just going to ignore <laughs> everything you guys just said. <laughs> Professor, you are very creative. <laughs> yeah. so I mean, like, in years, I'll do that. Professor Kivendor, he's more perverted than well, I've, my other I've friends. studied uh, dragon procreation. Don't you, don't you test me. Fair enough. Right. Wait. We're well, off in our reproduction, all right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, unless you got 13... Unless the party wants to come up with 13,000 gold for a staff of healing, we ain't got no staff of healing, so... <laughs> I mean, um, I could go in for much? it if somebody really wanted it. It's the 13,000 gold for the staff. I don't know if anybody wanted it. I was just gauging interest in, in bringing up a cost. Yeah, we're good. Um, oh. Are you going to buy it outright? What? I'm just got you guys... Coming. I don't buy shit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck. All right. That'll be. You'll put the staff down onto the table and go. Give me the gold. Um. How much money do I have actually? I will also have picked up a couple <laughs> of uh, greater healing potions. All right. 
a couple of greater healing potions, 150, uh, 150 gold a potion. Okay. And then I'll take the gold and just, like, slide it into, like, this weird uh, shelf, that, or a nut shelf drawer that pops out from underneath the counter, and he slides the drawer back in, and you hear a ching ching yeah. Well, I'm glad uh, I'm glad we have an everyday millionaire in our party because I was not willing to give up that much gold. <laughs> I still have I'm four thousand left. So, the same. Do you have a ring of warmth? A ring of warmth. warmth. Probably. A warmth ring. Warmth. 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 Not war. Not warmth. 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 <laughs> warmth. <laughs> oh shit! Uncommon requires attunement. You sure you want this ring of warmth? Ring of warmth. Not a, uh, not, a, not a huge fan of being cold. Oh, yeah. Leoric is the person yeah. goes on a two-day vacation with like a fourteen-day supply of stuff. <laughs> Twenty pairs of underwear. Just in case. Like, Leo, we're only going to be in the north for a day or two. <laughs> I got to buy a ring of warm. Um, I'm curious. I'm a curious. If it's like five gold, then I, yeah, I'll take it. Five gold! Five <laughs> gold. I've never had this much money before, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Being being an adventurer is very lucrative. Apparently. Probably <laughs> Tiamat is yeah. pretty lucrative. Yeah. Being a bard, you're used to just living on tips. <laughs> well, he's in, he went to college. He's in debt, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> it's a little bit too close to home IRL. <laughs> I, uh, I will also, I'm going to buy everybody silk long, long johns to wear underneath their parkas. Because they're very warm. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well, and thank it's you. not bulky. <clears throat> I do appreciate the comfort. Anybody know how to find like a, uh, a certain word in a in Adobe Acrobat? Control F yes. doesn't work. No. I'm right there. Hold on. Hold on. Found it. Oh. There it is. Uh, uncommon item. It's a thousand gold. He's already there. Ah! <laughs> a thousand. Uh, fine. I'll just be a little cold. I'll you every night. That's very thoughtful of you, Ezra. I'll do it for free too. I really think, Viorik, you should use this dragon vessel, because at least then we have a backup. Okay, well, it it does have the word dragon in the name, and it is kind of well themed, so I will Just take my dragon vessel. Better. Stirred, not shaken. <laughs> All right, one dragon. You're no wait. You have the dragon vessel. You know, we already have one. Yeah. I'm okay. Just, yeah. Just. Oh. Also, it occurs to me that we also got a longbow plus one out of that horde, and nobody uses bows. Ezra, do you use bows? I can. I could figure it out. I'll. I'll take it if uh, okay. something doesn't respond well to imaginary knives. Maybe real arrows will do. Yeah. Do better. Okay. Ezra, we gotta get you a gun. A what? I want to see you okay. shoot a motherfucker. <laughs> I feel like you would apologize after this. <laughs> I mean, oh you're really. You his ass. I mean, you're really good with these like psycho knives, but like, what if like somebody hits you with a spell and turns off your brain and you can't make these knives? What are you gonna do? I'll tell My you what you do. Bang! Off. I don't know if I'll do any. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, here's here's the thing. I don't. I don't think a rogue can use a longbow. I don't think you have training. Yes, they can. I'm certain they can. A scout uh, can. Uh, scouts have training in martial arts. So and simple weapons. Yeah, I do not think I. I, I pick mm -hmm. up the knife. I mean the longbow, and I'm like, this is like the size of me. I thought these were, <laughs> you know. Oh. No, yeah. son, it's a longbow. You're. It's got like you gotta. Technically, you should be. You have to use strength in order to pull it back. But I don't know. Can I just believe in myself really hard? It I don't think the longbow <laughs> cares, but you could you could try. I don't know, man. Do you have a sentient longbow that cares? 
Oh, sentient weapons are. Whew, there's like laws against owning them and selling them. It's technically slavery, so. Oh, it's I just. I wouldn't really go that far. It's. It's hard. You could have a, like a dancing longbow for whatever and it to shoot itself. What kind of dance does it do? It like twirls around, just like a uh, nice little flip too. Every now and again, if you hear like uh, go wee, then, then it shoots. <laughs> A sentient dancing longbow, and it's gonna be a fucking psychopath. <laughs> it's like a, a prima ballerina. It's very stuck up. It has a personality, and it speaks. Actually, you know what? Why not? Could I really right think about really hard about this bow and use it, or should we just sell it? See which one? I'll give you a thousand gold for it. Okay. Cool. Give me the bow. Here. <laughs> All right, cool. This is gonna be. This is gonna. I'm gonna duplicate the fuck out of this. And then he t t uh, flams a giant bag of gold onto the table and then slides it towards you. Thousand gold, right there. Okay. I think. And they just be easier for you to put the those in platinum. Nah, I like big bu big bags of gold, boy. You like big like butts, so you cannot laugh. <laughs> that too. We each get 167 gold. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> Freeze our butts off. I concur. Oh. Mm. All right. I guess. Mm -hmm. What All kind right. of spells am I going to prepare for this kind of trip? Uh, the, the Lord Bogothkis, do you want to take us to uh, the Sea of Shards? Okay. Bean change. Uh, the Sea of, uh, excuse me, Shards? In, up north, Icewind can... Dale area. So, I can probably take you to Icewind Dale, but the Sea of Shards, that area, the winds up there is, they're just, like, from an altitude of <clears> about <throat> two, 200 feet, it's just, it's just uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. Fair. Like, nothing except maybe dragons can fly through there, and my castle is not very fast, so. Fair, okay. Um... I think we're gonna take a boat then. How far right. is it from Icewind Dale to the Sea of Shards? Because I don't think we want to walk that. That would be bad. Yeah. Well, considering that the sea, the endless ice sea, or no, that, that's not what I called it. It's Sea of Shards, goddammit. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Oh, uh, um, well, we could take you yeah, a couple of days, but. I think I'd rather be on a boat. <laughs> Sounds nice. I like the sea. All right. I've never you guys, been. You guys go towards the dock, and it's kind of actually easy to see or see the uh, the ice skimmer compared to everything every other ship. Whereas every other ship looks like they're they're just the average uh, uh, frigate or or uh, spooner, just uh, or sloop, whatever the fuck it's supposed to be called. <laughs> The uh, the ice skimmer has one massive sail, just kind of like in the center of the ship. It's about sixty feet long, and the front of it is made of iron with a ram uh, in front of it. And you see these uh, these uh, two arms that kind of stick out, but are folded forward, and they have weird uh, floating skis kind of mm -hmm. at the uh, at the end of them. And you can see the. Uh, uh, the drawbridge is down, and this one human man is like yelling at everyone, like, "Look, get those supplies into the into the hold quickly. We we uh, our group can be here any minute, and that must be them." Hello. And uh, your you... crew is running a little bit slow. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, you see, he's got a hood up. Uh, I can't really see much of the left side of his face, but the right side, he's a, uh, a rather handsome man with a rugged five o'clock shadow black beard and uh, black hair, uh, piercing blue eyes. And and he stands <clears throat> at roughly about 5'7". Wears a lot of furs to keep, probably to keep warm. Uh but uh he then introduced himself as hold on i have to go back a chapter now because i totally forgot his name <laughs> read it earlier today I swear. 
Uh, my name's Larusta. Larusta? Captain Larusta. Oh, Captain Larusta. Yeah, yeah. I'll be I'll be taking you to the Sea of Shards. From yep. there, pretty much anywhere you want to go. We'll see how it goes. How long Egging. is the journey? Oh well, getting to there probably take us two days tops. Okay. We could get we could get pretty uh, pretty fast here. Once we get there, we'll have to slow down and then um, travel our way through the ice flows, uh, and hopefully not get crushed. Right. Anything we should. Be prepared for. I can say that I've been north of Luskin. You you good with freezing your balls off? No. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. You don't want this to happen. And he pulls back his hood, and you see like the left side of his face is all scarred and almost blackened. Uh, looks like he he uh, he like suffered from uh, just intense cold on the left side of his face, and he goes. This is what happens when you run into a uh, an ancient white dragon, when an angry ancient white dragon. And he just yeah. covers his face again. Gave you quite a makeover. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The uh, bitter cold does that to people. Good. But uh, thanks to a few artificers, I got a new arm back. And he <clears throat> pulls out his arm from underneath the uh, his his like cloak, and it's all. Uh, made of brass and mechanical and you see the a uh, couple of clock uh clockwork stuff just moving beneath his arm beneath the metal plating that's ah, beautiful was, was one of those artificers a, a gnome oh yeah yeah you know you heard him hutch yeah, really actually, good with his hands yeah i never have actually <clears throat> anyway uh how about we get you guys uh, set sail. And Ahoy. start your movement, or start you guys headed north. And Do with we that... Do we have our own berth, or are we all sleeping together? Uh, I mean, we I've, I've got cabins on the ship, but, like, uh, I highly suggest sleeping together. More warmth that way. I don't like to sleep alone anyway. I get a nightmare. Maybe we can divide up into, like, Three and three. Yeah. All of us in the same room gets kind of musty. <laughs> Fair. It's the mushrooms, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I bet them is very warm, though. <clears throat> I mean, yes. But with that, uh, the frost skimmer uh, then sets sail north. Your guys are able to make a pretty decent speed, about 375 okay. miles a day. Mm. Guys, go out. He go, takes you guys out here, and then take you guys over here. Yeah. First day, no problem. You guys kind of like pass by Neverwinter pretty easily on the third day. And then uh, you see... Luskin, kind of right up here, and uh, you see uh, no smoke coming from it, but he gets close enough to where you could actually see it, and the town, it looks like it's rebuilding uh, from the attack, but <coughs> uh, it does not, it didn't look good. Mm. My experience of Luskins is that, well, they're mostly assholes, uh, but... <laughs> But they're, they're tough assholes, you know. Mm. Uh, for a dragon to have done this kind of damage, it must have been serious. Yeah, it seems like they are getting more bold. <laughs> and then. Guys, uh, you're from up here, aren't you? That's right. I'm from the Dale. The Dale? And... Icewind Dale. Icewind. And people are from Icewind Dale? <laughs> Yeah, I told you we sleep like all together, a whole troop. It was, it was really oh, warm. I was, I thought oh. that was a joke. I didn't no. realize. Yeah, there's so, like a, a settlement called Ten Towns, which is literally the remnants of Ten Towns. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the people come and go, but from 
It doesn't seem like a place you'd want to stay very long. Oh, it's quite warm once you find the, the hearth of friendship and good oh. song and story. That's so sweet. That's what we have to tell ourselves when it gets really cold. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. And with that, you guys get into the first ice flows. And then uh, from here, you guys can only make about like 70, 75 or uh, 75 miles a day as you traverse through the giant ice, uh, all the glaciers and uh, stuff that just move up ahead. You see the uh, when you find an ice uh, uh a piece of glacier that's in your way and it's large enough that you could just cut right through it in the uh the ice skimmer uh once you gets on onto the uh the glacier itself the two arms swing out and then act kind of like as giant skis and then you you really get going uh the skimmer seems to be, be able to make a, a pretty good distance for most of these days and then uh i need somebody to start right about here on about sixth or seventh day uh you guys wake up and you just see the sea of shards giant uh spikes sticking out of the uh, out of the uh the sea as these glaciers seem to crash into each other and then cause each other to uh, to jut forward and giant spikes that stick out into the sky uh every once in a while you'll see a large glacier that'll just uh ram its way through the sea of shards and you're going to be doing the same can somebody on the first day roll me a uh out on the uh a d6 not it Four. Four. Cool. <clears throat> you guys get to about here, into the uh, the Sea of Shards. When uh, you guys are looking out for the last known location of the the uh, whatever it's called the the, the drake horn. horn, the the someone the crimson. Yeah, Macath, Macath the Crimson. You guys remember any other anything else besides that? Uh, ancient? No, not ancient. It was something about wizards. The Arcane Brotherhood. Arcane Brotherhood. <laughs> yeah. And um, let's see. Oh, uh, noise across the Sea of Shards. Uh, she was last seen on a glacier island with tall spires reaching toward with, with really tall spires. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. You, I would say you guys are looking out for that the the uh, the tall spired glacier. Uh, and then um, let's see. I got Fawn Lem, Professor Gryffindor, Leoric, Ezra, and Henbane. I think yeah. that's everyone. And then I need. Captain Oh, one second. Where is he? I will have spent most of this time trying to figure out how the rigging works and probably annoying the shit out of all of the sailors. <laughs> I've definitely just been staring over the bow, watching it smash ice and going, cool. <laughs> uh, most of the sailors are probably guards. You know, as a, typically I think people with psychic powers got a lot going on up here. I, I, you strike me as a very mindful person. I would say I have, well, rather my parents would always say I had an overactive imagination. And I guess it just got so active, everyone else started to see it, too. <laughs> Alright. Other than that... Giggly. 
You guys spend most of your days looking out on the side of the ship to see anything uh, uh, coming your way, anything going away. Uh, you do, don't see a whole lot of wildlife up here in the Sea of Shards. There's just uh, not not a whole lot of living things until about uh, on the, the third day you're in the Sea of Shards, or the first day you're in the Sea of Shards. Lamp, wherever you are. <laughs> I hope he gets back soon. Because he's the only one person with perce passive perception to see these things. <laughs> My passive perception's 21. Okay, okay. You may be able to see them too. And that depends on their role, though. Yeah. <laughs> I got a 16 passive wisdom perception. <laughs> ah, he can hear me, just can't respond well <laughs> Lem and uh henbane you see for the first time since you guys entered the shard uh, the uh the sea of shards see like a flock of birds in the distance you're like huh that's weird birds out here in the middle of fucking nowhere in the goddamn tundra possibly in dragon territory birds those aren't birds as they uh as they get closer you see that they're getting larger and larger uh uh, more more scaly uh, and you oh. see white uh, scales on uh, no arms but like winged creatures with frost uh, spikes on their uh, almost like armor on their their uh, their scales and they're hoarfrost drakes oh so here. oh no and they, strikes. Okay. they start surrounding the ship. Oh no. Captain? Is this normal? Uh fuck. Fuck fuck fuck. Uh he then uh yells, Patten down the hatches, all all hands prepare for combat. We're wait, combat? We got we've got Drake's incoming. <clears throat> and then boop. Everybody roll initiative. Oh. Oh, 40. Not bad. Yeah. <clears throat> Can it come in so handy? Don't need Barum anymore. He's not with you guys. <coughs> And I need Lim rolled an eight. I'm on it. And then I need the uh well he's gonna spend his time steering the ship. So But the guards Guards are <clears throat> All right, cool. Tending. And with that, we will start with Henbane. Okay. Um... So I'm going to uh, spread my wings and take flight. And I'm going to go, um, I'm, I'm going to get this in uh -huh. over here. I'm going to fly up to it and I can do 60 feet around if I'm flying. And I am just going to like almost jousting with my staff and just try and whack it out of the sky. Okay, yeah. That'll... We'll see, we'll see if that does a thing. Twenty? Twenty hits. And that's... Fourteen. Bludgeoning damage. And... Minus fourteen? Yeah, and I'm gonna 
drop I'm going to drop one of the charges out of my staff into it also. Okay. So that it does an extra d6. Um, and then we'll whack it again. So far, you yeah, like leaped into the air, bringing your, your staff up and hitting it underneath the, the jaw. And then you quickly bring the other side of the staff back down onto its other of the other side of the head's head hitting for 20. I'm gonna whack it. Whack it. Whap, good. Whap. So that's 10 bludgeoning damage. Um, uh, I'm gonna spend a key point and do a stunning strike. Stunning strike. It needs to do a con save. Yes, it's a DC a uh, 17 con save now. That's a 23. Oh, well, fuck. Yep. Um, feel your stunning strike go through the staff and into it. You, you shove your key into this fucking creature and then it just shakes off your, your attempt to stun it because if you did, it would have then fallen into the water. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. Um, I'm going to spend another key point and do flurry of blows. All right. Uh, so I'll whack it twice with my stick, and I'm just going to headbutt it. All right. Oh, that, that doesn't hit. Nope, that does not hit. It uh, kind of ducks uh, ducks away from you. It like, flies backwards for a second. Um, and then I will, since I missed with the headbutt, I'll do like a backflip and try and catch it under the chin with my foot for my second one. That'll probably do it. Yep, that'll mm -hmm. hit. Another eight uh, bludgeoning damage. Uh, extract as aspects, please. Extract aspects, cool. Well, you know it is vulnerable to fire, immune to cold, they speak common and draconic, but can't talk. And, um, yeah. I will immediately shout, Leoric, they understand common. Oh, thank God. <laughs> And that's my turn. <laughs> okay. And that's your turn. Vaughn, you're up. Um, <clears throat> I see all these drakes are away from the boat. Yes. So... Oh, uh, also, I forgot to mention this. Uh, in, you're not on water. Uh, you're on a ice. You're on a very large iceberg, just skiing across it. So if you guys do fall off the boat, you'll just punk, land onto the <laughs> iceberg. Oh, okay. Wonk. Are, are, are these we, are we moving or? Yeah, I'd say you're you're moving right now. Because the sail is full. About how quickly? About uh uh, I'm gonna say sixty feet around. Okay. So, don't fall off. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm coming to get you. Hmm. Life flight. <laughs> I'm gonna. They are twenty feet above you guys. I'm gonna throw my hand hand axe at that one. At that one? Yes. At disadvantage. Oh. Uh, 18 still hits. Cool. She just pull out a hand axe and just yuck. Yeah. Uh, Henbane, there's a you hear behind you and you like do a spin move before the axe comes out of nowhere and hits this thing into the chest. Doing uh, you're not raging right now, are you? No, I forgot to turn that off. So you're doing 11 slashing damage and fuck that hurt. But the thing's still up, albeit barely. And then my other hand axe. These aren't magical hand axes, are they? No, uh, also not. at disadvantage because you're still outside the. Uh, you're outside your close range, so that still fucking hits. And your damage is twelve. With the second hand axe, you just 
<laughs> hit it in the neck, and he goes, screeches out where it's going, and then uh, just falls to the ground dead. And then once it hits the ground, it goes, it just slides away. <laughs> Give Henbane a thumbs up that I'm just gonna like hold my sword and like whacking the other drakes just in case they don't go anywhere near our uh our wizards and magical casters. Okay. Uh Professor Gryffindor. Uh I say Who needs protection around here? Go! And I take out a feather and I press it against your forehead and I slap your face and you, uh, <laughs> and I cast fly on you. Alright. <laughs> Go get them! If they get to me, uh, if, if they, if they get close to me, you've already failed your job. <laughs> you got it. Uh, and that's my turn. <laughs> okay. That's, you, you're flying now. Cool. How many feet of movement does he have? Uh, he has 60 feet of flying movement. Oh, cool. For 10 minutes. And it's a scary bond. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alright. Uh, and now it is Leoric's turn. Neat. But also, you're concentrating. Oh. I'm going to uh, spend the bardic inspiration to unsettling words on the one closest to Henbane. That one right there? Yeah. And, um... Then I'm going to... We'll see how this works. Try raffle him Psychic Lance, sorry. Bring my fingers together and extend a, a, a bead of Psychic Energy, which then uh, elongates into a Lance and launches, uh, inspired by Ezra, uh, towards the... Drake, Drake Doodle. The Drake Doodle. <laughs> I, don't, I forgot the name. The whole. It was, it was cool. It was yeah, yeah. It was a cool name. Just forgot. Yeah. Um. Does it have to roll something? Yeah. It is an intelligence save. Oh. Uh. And it. You subtract whatever <laughs> it's a four. Okay. You know, just for the sake of rolling dice. <laughs> he rolled a two. Or he gets a two. Neat. Uh, so he'll take some damage, assuming that it's a he. Uh, 23 psychic damage. Uh, uh, it screeches out in paint. And then and, uh, shakes its head. And it's incapacitated until the end of my next turn. Incapacitated. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. I'm just gonna say he's gonna like sit there, shaking its head while floating in the air, kind of like not moving or keeping up. So, uh... so the start of my next turn. I'm sorry, I'm a big bad okay. liar. <laughs> Easy target, Henbane. And then the next is uh, Ezra. Um, well, seeing everyone else is flying, I'll, I'll, I'll join in. I'll activate the Amethyst Lodestone to give myself flight for 10 minutes. And the way, it's just my walking speed, so I think the way it works is I literally <laughs> just start, like, walking upstairs into the air and just running at one of the drakes. Uh, I'll go over here. And, uh, I'll, I'll spawn a blade on, on guard! <laughs> That's what I'm, I don't, I don't get it. I'm trying to... Circus people. Circus people. Uh, that hits. Will be... Just seven psychic damage. Minus seven. Cool. And, and then... that will be it. All right, it was a bonus action to activate the lodestone. Yeah. Next are the guards. Uh, these two are going to man the harpoons. Ooh.
Did Zach freeze, or is he just really good at holding still? Uh, oh, there nope, he is. I am <laughs> Mickey's not streaming, is he? Uh, Aaron? I think he is. God fucking damn it. We need to tell him not to stream on Tuesdays. Well, he normally streams earlier. <clears throat> no, wait, no, he's not. But he is probably playing games, though. Yeah. And he's probably on with right. Yeah. Because now I have to... I have to... Redo roll twenty, and it's taking forever for me to load in. I e it's all Mickey's fault. <laughs> Maybe it could be. Um, it could also be you know you need to turn your shit off your computer and restart them from time to time. I literally updated it this morning. Maybe you could just open as many tabs as you can <laughs> so... and never close them. When was the last time you actually turned your computer off and back on? Does a restart count? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not really. All right, fine. Then um, a couple <laughs> days <you> ago. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call all um, I'm Lista? All I'm going to say is that you need to make sure your shit is updated, and then when it updates, turn off your computer and turn it back on with the power button. Okay. I'll have to remember that. Anyway. It goes for the rest of you, too. I already do. I already do that. <laughs> See, I'm a boomer. I hit the I hit the shutdown button every night. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Do that. <laughs> Cause you know. You know, because you know things gotta gotta rest or they they wear out faster, right? Something like that. You know. That and like software gets funky. Well, yeah, I know. That's what, they, that's what they taught us at Microsoft. They're like, turn your shit off. <laughs> run. Anyway. Zach died. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Lamar, what's your cat's name? Oh, that is Leo. Neo? Leo. L E O. Leo. Leo. Okay. Leo the lion. Aww. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, no, he's Leo the pissin', but you know. <laughs> Like a piece in. Sorry if you can see that. I'm, I apologize. I'm no, camera. not really. I just saw that there <laughs> was a cat over there. Yeah, no, he usually sleeps back here. Probably need to uh, <clears throat> shorten the depth of my camera yeah. so you can't see his litter box. Cause that's probably. Pretty you can, bad. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell what it was back there. I just saw that there was a oh, cat because no. I could see his little white feet. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm just saying that in general. I probably just need to. Mm. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the welcome to this interview. Thank you for meeting with me today. I see your cat's litter box behind you in this very <laughs> professional business you meeting. See, you see nothing. <laughs> you see nothing. <laughs> uh, oh. Lamb, it's your turn. Oh, it finally got to my turn, huh? Wow. Okay. Um. So. Um, symbiotic form, taking shape, that is that, uh, they're 20 feet, uh, they're 20 feet away from us, right? Uh, yeah. So, I am going to. No, I'm actually going to wait. Hold off on that. Never mind. Yeah, we have to like gauge the difficulty of this fight first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I took I took meta magic adept, so I can spend two sorcery points to turn a regular spell into a bonus action. But I'm gonna hold off. On that. Um. Meta magic druid. My God. I know, isn't it great? <laughs> uh, so I decided to have some fun. Um, then that is my turn, because I can't do anything else. 
Actually, you know what? Fuck it, I'll cast Shalili. Shalili! Shalili. Just to get that going. And that's my turn. Alright. Cast Shalili, and that's your turn. And next is the Drake's turn. Uh, this one is incapacitated. That one, is, this one is going to sweep down at uh, Professor Gryffindor. Vaughn, you've already <laughs> failed. <laughs> and uh, he's Wish going to take a glaive and bonk him. He's going to take a bite and a claw attack at you. No. Uh, Twenty to hit. <laughs> One off. <laughs> You're one, one off. off. Shield. Shield? Yeah. Okay. And then claw. Uh, 14. And then uh, you see him like just swoop down in front of you, try to claw and bite you. You lift up your shield. And then uh, it's like very presence seems to like emit a, a, an aura of frost. And I need you to give me a, uh, a con save. Oh, in fact, I need... Oh you, gosh. Vaughn, <laughs> Leoric, and Lem to give me a con save. 16. 16. Oh. Alright, cool. Um. Oh, 14. fuck me. 14, uh, 6, and a 4. Cool. Uh, according to this, uh, uh, aura around it your hands kind of like almost freeze and you drop whatever you're ho whatever you're holding i'm a mage <laughs> also you take uh you take 14 cold damage uh half if you failed or if it succeeded half if you failed awesome so then i need to do a con save at advantage Oh man, I rolled a 13. What was the damage? 14 points of uh, cold. Damage. cold, I think. Oh, but it's a but half. But then you only took 7? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Never mind. I hold. Half, yeah, half of you beat the DC at 12. Nice. I am alive. Yeah, yeah, you're still flying. And then <laughs> uh, this one is going to go down towards Lem. Uh, <laughs> Not this shit again. <laughs> Lem is getting two claws and a bite. Uh, twenty for the first claw. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that hits. You take, you take five piercing damage and two cold damage. Oh, I have my ward up. And then you see them kind of swarm over this guy, and he gets eviscerated. Oh god. So, and guards do not have a whole lot of health, so he's dead. Sailor, no! no! <laughs> and then Ezra, hey, this guard. one's gonna fly around you. Give me! Oh, Ezra, I mean. <laughs> and this one's gonna fly around you. You get a claw and a bite. 9, 14, 16 is the highest. I don't think, nope, 18. All right, cool. And then the other one's incapacitated. Next is the knight, and uh, everything that isn't moving forward goes back 60 feet, which is this guy. Only this guy. 45. And then he just disappears in the map, beyond the map. I need the one in front of me to make a con save, please. <clears throat> and then the one in front of you makes a con save. Or a natural one. Nice. Oh wait, no, sorry, that's the wrong one. I'm in my symbiotic form. So he takes six points of necrotic damage. Minus six. Cool. And then we're back to Henbane. Okay, I'm going to. Um, fly over here and get it on the other side. Oh, there we go. Shadow is freaking me out. Um, right. uh, on the other side, opposite from Ezra, and I'm gonna wave over the Drake's head and turn that into whack. Um, I'm a whack. Yeah, whack it. I'm a whack. 
with your whack and stick. With my whack and stick. It's no longer a step strike, it's a whack and stick. It's, okay. it, that hits. It's only to see the stick, always think of that meme now. Like... <laughs> uh, stunning strike. Uh, minus seven, and then a stunning strike. Seven. Okay, it's stunned. It's stunned, it falls onto the ice. Just... <laughs> Uh, takes another uh, 2d6 fall damage, which is 10. Um, how far? How far down? Uh, 20 feet. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna fly down and whack it again. All right, you you can do so with advantage. As it's both it's prone and stunned. incapacitated. It, it's oh. only stunned until the end of my next turn. I don't know how much health it's got. Just murder. Twelve? Oh, I have, a, I have advantage. Uh, yeah, that'll work. But you'll have to be oh, right here to hit him. That's naturally twenty. That's a nat twenty. Nice. Nice. That'll do. You just kind of like fold your wings in and then bring uh, bring your staff down onto the motherfucker. Just an overhead strike. Two. Should have hit the other button. So double the die. So it's another D eight. Blue. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Minus nine damage. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll just do one extra strike and not flurry of blows. And do your bonus action whap him. Uh, yeah, just a, you... just a bonus action. I'm just gonna stomp on it. Alright. One axe kick coming up. Okay. I'll do that at the end. Maybe I'll get another natural 20. Nope. Nope. Okay. An 18 um, will hit though. I do another 5 damage. Um, that was 35. And then I'm just gonna go, like, five feet up. Cause that's okay. the last, that's the last of my movement. Alright. And then you're, you're kind of five feet, kind of keeping up with the, with the, uh, the frost skimmer. And mm -hmm. next up is Vaughn. Alright, I can now fly. So I'm gonna quickly go fly up to above Gryffindor. I'm gonna hit that Drake. <laughs> nice little uppercut. Cool. That's my first attack. Are you raging? No. No? Okay, cool. Just 24 damage and no rage damage. Neato. <laughs> oh my god, I'm just gonna do a quick <laughs> Just a slice upwards as you fly up next to Gryffindor and then uh, you just bring the blade over and then stab him in, stab it into him again. Um, That's right. With uh, a twenty damn cool. Uh there goes there goes my frost drake. Just you <laughs> stab it you stab the sword straight through its its like head going in and then out the other side. And then you slice upwards, just slicing the upper head uh, open. Yep. And then that's that's one dead drake. And then I'm gonna move just above Lem now. Watching this. <clears throat> and that'll be my turn. And that'll be your turn. Cool. Professor Gryffindor. I had half a mind to just go, I drop fly. <laughs> uh, I drop fly. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's only five feet above Vaughn. Yeah, so. but, he, but he would land on Lamb. So, you know, <laughs> that'd be funny. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to expend much more. This fight is looking pretty simple fireball on this guy on this guy so you lean leaning around lem go and that's uh a 21 to hit you do you see the fire like emit forward and then catch on all like its chest a little bit and it screeches out going, <laughs> flapping about 
Uh, it seems you did a little more damage than you thought you'd do. All right, everybody, use fire damage. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's I'm Henbane. the only one who, know, who has fire spells. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did Henbane yell out, by the way, they're weak to fire. Uh, yeah. Did you yell Wait. out? Nope, you I just mean, said they could speak common. I just said they could speak common. I suppose from now on I will just yell everything. <laughs> <laughs> my no fist names. Told, my fist says... Damn. You know, casting Scorching Ray would have been a lot cheaper than Fly. <laughs> <laughs> I am a turn. Okay, end your turn. And then it is Leoric. Okay, uh, seeing as though Vaughn can fly, is now facing off with this thing. Like, uh, why he's fire when I can use Vaughn. And <laughs> I will uh, cast first level Dissonant Whispers on the Drake that they're faced off with. Okay. Uh, they get the wisdom save. That's a Ooh. 21. Oh. Shit. What happens if they succeed, succeed against it? Um, I think they just take damage, but they're not compelled to run away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Minus five. Cool. Uh, you, the feel the psychic energy just come uh, come in through through your dissonant whispers, uh, but they they don't feel the urge to to run away. Mm. <laughs> oh, that was so smart, though. I was say, if they run away, then Vaughn can yeah. get an opportunity to attack and then it dies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. I think it's half of uh, 3d6. So. Okay, half of 10, so... Oh. Yeah. Just 5 damage. And... Um, is it just those two left that I'm seeing? Uh, you got so far yeah, three. Yeah, another one down here, so... Two more down here. Oh, okay. I don't know that I see those. I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll, stroll behind... Uh... The professor. <laughs> okay, cool. Nice. So, so do these, do these count as dragons, drakes? I, I don't know. I'm just trying to make small talk as a way of using him as a shield. Uh, well, professor, you see. You know, <laughs> you know drakes are, are uh, part dragon. They could be working for the dragon that you're looking for. Maybe. Drakes are like dragonlings. They're like, they, they're like little dragons, but they ain't shit. <laughs> Okay, but what's the difference between a drake and a and a worm? Drake worms, dragon, half dragon. Well, worms are typically about this big, and they're in the ground, and they're blind. No, I mean Y R M. Oh, okay, well, we're gonna go into this conversation. <laughs> okay, and then you just start discussing the difference between a worm, a drake, uh, a wyvern. Why? Where did that come from? And uh, and uh, a dragon. So you just start discussing that, and then it's Ezra's turn. Uh, the ship's going at 60 feet a turn, right? Yeah. Uh, my flying speed is only my walking speed, so 30, so I move back 30 spaces, <laughs> running at maximum speed, <laughs> trying not to get left behind. <laughs> oh. so I'm going like, to fly away, I'm going to throw one last knife at the, uh, dragon that Honey's fighting, or the Drake, uh, let's see... That is a 16. You have a disadvantage, because... No. No, advantage, it's, it's Advantage because it's stunned, but disadvantage because it's prone. That still hits. Okay, so... sweet. Uh, and we'll throw... We'll throw a sneak attack onto it for 23. Well, you, you throw your psychic knife, you hear it, you, you, you see it, try to, like, stand back up. The, the knife goes into the back of its head, it goes... And then it's, now it's dead. Yeah, I think at this point I'm like going past. Oh, hi, Vaughn! Another one, eh? Uh, hi, I didn't know yeah, I could fly. I do. You could fly too. <laughs> I'm gonna. Can everybody out. fly now? <laughs> Lim, can you fly? Eventually, yes. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, another That's eight good. psychic damage as I toss a bonus action blade in the drink by Vaughn. Alright. And, uh,. Minus eight. Cool. And with that, it is uh, the guard's turn. 
this one's gonna spin his his uh ballista around and try to fire it at this guy who killed his friend. You killed Billy. Oh no! Poor Doesn't Billy. hit Billy. another it, Billy. It, it goes wide. <laughs> you know how many how many Billies are in my world? William is a common name. <laughs> it's a, it's a very common name for everyone. And then it's Lem's turn. Okay, so since I heard them say that fire does a good job, and since I dropped my shillelagh, uh, you see Lem's hands go together and he casts Fire Blade as a bonus action. And I attack the guy in front of me. It's a natural 18. I don't know if that's hit or not. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that was crap. Six fire damage. Six fire damage for a total of 12, which is enough. You just oh, slice the, your your flaming sword through these this creature, and it goes... Uh, it cuts through pretty easily. like Kind of like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> oh, They're made good. of butter. <laughs> I'm going to then run up here... And uh, use my reaction. The guy that's in front of me needs to take a con save. Con save. That's a nine. Ah, uh, you suck. Ah, oh, I suck. Mm. Five. <clears throat> Five necrotic damage. Okay. That's my turn. All right. Uh, next up are the drakes. Uh, this one is actually going to snake its way around Lem and still be kind of be hovering above the stairs. And then this one's going to close in on Lem, and they're both going to to attack Lem. No, Lem! Bring it! They don't have pack tactics, so that's that's too bad. But oh well, they get three <laughs> attacks on him anyway. Claw, claw, bite. Uh, highest was 13 nope. from the Ugh. back dude. Forward dude, claw, claw, bite. Oh, oh there it is. Bite crit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one out of six. That's pretty good, guys. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> like, they just scratch at you and then uh, go for the bite of the neck. You kind of just punch the one behind you, but uh, the other one gets you on like the shoulder where your neck and shoulder meet. And you take 10 piercing damage and 4 cold damage. For a total of 14 damage. Somebody help Lem! They got him in the trapezius! It's like oh. an icy hot. <laughs> and then uh, it's uh, the knight's turn. Uh, well, Captain, whatever is left, Lestura. Uh, ship moves forward another 60 feet. Which means Ezra, I believe you go back another 30 if you're just booking it. So you're about there. And I used all of my movement on my turn, so I would be back also. You'd be right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, <clears throat> this guy is pretty much gone. And next is Henbane. Ezra, do you need help? I get it. Okay. <laughs> press, a, press X to doubt. Um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, fly up 15 feet so that I am now level with this guy here. And uh, on my way up, I'm gonna try and whack his soft, scaly underbelly with my stick mm. on the way up. The whack and stick. Stick of whack. For a 22. 22 hits. Uh, for 10 uh, nice. bludgeoning Two. damage. Cool. Let's see. Uh, stunning strike. Uh, stunning strike. He's got to do a con save. It's a 13. Fail fail he is the stunned 
Um, okay. I'm going to whack him again. You so do so at advantage. He will falls to the deck, and I just... Well, I assume 25, 25. still hits. 25 hits. Whap. Uh, 12. Another, um, nope, I don't want to give Penbane 12 damage. <laughs> no, I don't need 12 damage. Random 12 damage out of nowhere. I, uh, I went so hard I hurt myself. Um, and then I'm gonna, for my... I did so well, uh, God said no. <laughs> yeah, uh, for my unarmed strike, I'm just gonna come across and I'm gonna stomp on him. Okay. Make your attack with advantage. Ooh, good, because that wasn't good. That was not good. There we go, that's better. 21. Alright, 21 hits. For 7 bludgeoning damage. So I'll step on him, and then I'll go over here. <laughs> Okie doke. Uh, actually, I will go is... up one. So Alright. Next is Vaughn. I'm gonna go right there. Right, 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 right next to Henbane. Just temporarily. <laughs> and then I'm gonna hit that one who's stunned. Alright. I get advantage. Oh yeah. Mr. <clears throat> Samurai Barbarian, who's obsessed with advantage. Mm hmm. 30. Cool. How is 30 <laughs> not a crit? Uh -huh. 12. He's still alive? Uh, no. <laughs> you just, like, <laughs> jump. You just fly over and then bring the sword down on the motherfucker. He's dead. You hear a quack. Okay, just back over here and let that boy. Alright. No, no, no longer with advantage. Yeah. <clears throat> 31. Cool. You rolled a natural 19. You're just slicing through these things. Mm hmm. Well, these are um, total beast creatures. I was hoping they'd be more. more problematic. <laughs> Aura thing is pretty frightening. It's not too late yeah. to spawn uh, a dozen more. We're <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> getting bigger ones. Full, um, full dragons. One on the horizon. I guess that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, Professor Gryffindor. I will elect Giddy. to uh, just hit him with some fire. <laughs> Firebolt hits. You do 14 damage. That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Leoric. I will talk shit about it. Talk shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to insult Beware. its mother. And call yourself a Drake's. That's a six. Six. Four points of psychic damage. <laughs> it has disadvantage on its next attack. Because it says. Hurt its I feelings. Got, I gotta know what you said. Pow, right the feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, all your friends are dead. <laughs> oh, I'm sad now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we go to Ezra. Uh, cool. Bonus action to dash. Put it in maximum overdrive. <laughs> and, uh, maximum you'll be joining them soon. <laughs> to the back of this drink, and I'm gonna try and. Uh, you hear that voice in the <laughs> <laughs> I 
completely whiff and fall down next to it. Yeah, you just... <laughs> it flies above your blade and you go, fuck! Wow! <laughs> Crash lands into the bow. <laughs> Uh, it is the guard's turn. This one's going to disappear underneath the thing. Uh, this one is going to just stay next to the uh, anchor in case anything happens. And I forgot last time he was supposed to spend his action reloading the ballista, which he has to do. So, Lem, you're up. Yay! Uh, attack the guy that's over the stairs. All Flame right. blade! Flame blade. Sword slash. Ooh, that's a natural 19. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. 12, four, 12 fire damage doubled to 24, and he's dead. <laughs> uh -huh. He's just. You slice him from, like, the bottom up in half, and he just separates Sounds pretty like easily. Like... <clears throat> Ooh. Okay. Um, Does he melt a little? He melts a little. Though, mm -hmm. where he cut flesh, he cauterized that. Mm. Are we still that, in combat? Nope, that kind of ends combat. Uh, I will... I will use... Da I'll use the dash action and grab Ezra and fly back, because I have 120 feet if I dash. So I'll... <laughs> Get him and just pull him back. Uh, assuming okay. you weigh less than 180 pounds. I do. Okay. Flying <laughs> sure is great, <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> Go like this. 80 miles per hour. <laughs> I'm uh, already leaning down, studying the cadaver and taking notes in my book, and I just say behind me without looking at Vaughn. You have ten. You have uh, about another nine minutes with that. So have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm behind the professor taking notes of him taking notes being like the adventurer took notes of <laughs> the adventurer took notes of the creature. oh no the, the adventurer has, is now inspecting its gonads oh, oh no oh. Uh, uh, so do you take notes um, looks like your average hoarfrost drake you've probably studied them before maybe Other than that, uh, guys probably spend uh, another day, or the rest of the day, you know, throwing the dead dude overboard, because that's what you do, you get buried at sea. I believe I can fly in the <laughs> sky. And then... When he least expects it, I drop it. <laughs> 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 Damn it! I'm gonna try to like aim for like when he when he's flying over the ship. I'm gonna try to time it so he lands on the deck and. <laughs> <laughs> you just like you stop you, you drop it and he slams into the mast. Oh, <laughs> I will leave I will. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Slam. Looks like my clock was a little off. <laughs> Uh, uh, right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Let's see here. Are there any other disturbances in the day? Uh, not for not for the remainder of the day. My Spotify is not working anymore. Oof. I know it was having issues today, but mine's working. So you're and mine's working too. Uh -oh. Oh, well, I was signed out earlier today, but uh, for the rest of the day, you guys have no issues, though you don't see the glacier you're looking for. Uh, the next day, you guys do get a long rest, so hit the wrong long rest button. Yay. Wrong rest. Yay! The wrong rest button. Wrong rest button. Rest. Need that wrong rest. I want to make sure that I have the right spells for the job here. And then, uh, while you're actually deciding on spells, I have to pee, so let's take a bathroom break real quick. Come back in, like, ten minute, ten-ish minutes. Okay. Nice. Or whenever you guys are all done. Doing your business. Doing your business. Hmm.
So many options. <laughs> That's what's great about playing the warlock in the other campaign. I get like 11 spells. <laughs> and I can, I can use three of them. Whoa. Sure rest now. Whoa. I know. Yeah, Joseph Careful. asked me, Joseph was like, why don't you play Warlock? And I was like, I don't think I could put up with the lack of spells that they have. Yeah. I, uh, I ended up taking Mind Prison for my Mystic Arcanum. Mind Prison? Yeah. Yeah, if they fail, they still take 5d10 psychic damage. Oh. Mm hmm. Hmm. I spend so much of my I spend like all my gold on on spell scrolls so I can put them in my book and now I have all these spells but I can only select so many. <laughs> See the question is is are we going to when do we make landfall because once we make landfall that changes my spell selection. Hmm. Well, I'd imagine that fire spells probably a safe bet. Well, I, I opted to swap out my Braces of Defense for Staff of Fire, so I'm a little squishier, but mm -hmm. I have a lot of fire spells now at my disposal. Mm -hmm. So Staff of Fire gives me Burning Hands, Fireball, and Wall of Fire. Ooh. And it has like 10 charges, so. Nice. So I wanted to use that for my fire source, and then my regular spells can be a little more on the utilitarian side mm -hmm. because we're going to be out in the fucking wilderness. <laughs> Henny would buy you every spell scroll ever if you let her be hasted. So I have, I have quite a few spells here that are a little more on the defensive abjuration side mm. and, uh, and some spells that are more on that are more designed to support the team mm. and then the staff. I mean, I do have scorching ray prepared just in case yeah. I don't use the staff, but um... but even then I don't think I'll need counter spell. I don't think a Yeti's going to, cast spells on me. Never know. Mage Yeti. No, no, no. Do Which, not run uh, counter spell, I swear to uh, God. <laughs> Which reminded me, um I actually had an idea with like with a ring of like uh what was it called? Spell holding? Uh Dang, that... I was thinking like two spells on it, like uh steal one strike. Which is a fifth level spell. Like can you imagine like a fighter or barbarian like using steal one strike? <laughs> Can can non spell casting classes use the ring? So yeah, I I dealt I dwelled some more uh, digging into that. So how it works is that the caster puts the spell into the ring, and the way they cast it is still implemented into the ring. So basically, if I were to use the spell on the ring, I'd be using your spell into my ring, but I'd be the one casting it. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A little bit. Well, the thing yeah, is, so is it. In other words, if you use to uh, cast a uh, steel wind strike on the ring, and then I use the steel wind strike, I'm the one who's going to be rolling for that attack. I don't think that that works though, because when you unattune from it, it loses all its spells. Yeah, that's that's only the problem. Ish, uh, that's the problem. That's the only issue with it. Yeah, yeah it's the attunement thing. Unless well Zach as, wants uh, to be very generous. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's being generous if I with the sixth level spell slot because I wanted to try a ten uh, tensor transformation on a barbarian. Yeah, no, I don't oh, even that's think terrifying because I think you have the option because it can only hold so many levels within it, and I think the level it caps at hold, five. You yeah, the level caps at five, and tensor uh, transformation I think is a sixth level spell. Yikes! And that tensor transformation is I like it a lot. It gives the cap for a caster fifty. Uh, hit, temporary hit points as well as they deal uh, 2d12 psychic damage on melee attacks. Mm. What kind of chips are you eating, Zach? Potato chips. Mm. Potato chips. Well, Perturter chips. No, salt, salt and vinegar. vinegar. Yeah. 
going to say, I didn't imagine that you were like a plain potato chip kind of guy. No, I'm a salt and vinegar kind of guy. Yeah. Vinegar is my... I don't know why I like the bitterness. Mm. I like the pain. <laughs> when you eat too much and it just rubs your, your tongue raw. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and then you eat like something spicy afterwards. Oh. Hurts just right. <laughs> um... The rest of the meme, what was the name? Kronk? Not Kronk, yeah, um, that Kronk. It was, uh, the guy from Impression <laughs> Groove. Like... I <laughs> fucking don't remember his name. What the fuck? I don't remember his name either. <laughs> uh, Willie, what are you doing? <laughs> My dog is very determined to unmake this bed. <laughs> no, make it softer. It's too, it's, it's, it's too made. He's trying to. Be, be yeah. <laughs> there you go. There we go. We got the wrinkles. <laughs> All right, fuck. Like, if eh. I can't, if I can't listen to normal music, I'll just listen to Cadence of Hyrule. Dead. Well, you're technically on the high seas. You can play some. Ah, uh... <gasps> sea shanties. Sea shanties. Love a good My mother told me someday I would buy. Isn't, wasn't that in, in um, in, um Valhalla? Valhalla. Yeah. I, my favorite Assassin's Creed still Black Flag. Yeah, yep. I agree. Those, those were really good. <clears throat> Anyways, everyone here yet? No, Ezra's not here yet. But how's everyone progressing guess... in Elden Ring? Oh. Not I'm playing good. it. <laughs> Aaron, I get tired of hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really no, terrible it's, considering. It's both, both of them. So, Zach and Mickey are both playing it. Most of you guys are probably playing it. My whole Saturday group is playing it. So I'm just on my Discord's all Elden Ring. <laughs> Everything is Elden Ring. I'm like, oh, I get it. It's a great game. Have fun with it. I just shut up about. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, watching UFC I'm and by everyone's progress. That's what I'm asking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yes. I watched UFC oh. and Elden Ring is one of the biggest sponsors on UFC. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Right. Yeah. Neato. Neato. I just oh. got to Redmain Castle in Khalid. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I went through. I've done. Uh, Renala, uh, Godric and Renala, and I went through the Karen Manor, and I met Ranny the Witch, and now I'm in Redmain Castle. Fuck, it took me all I had to just beat Margaret. Margit. What his name is? Margaret, Margaret the Fell Omen. Yeah, the Fell Omen, mister. I have a tail for some goddamn reason. Yeah. Wait. Who was the main boss I killed? Like, oh, it was the main boss I just killed. There's a lot of bosses I killed. There's way yeah. too many bosses. Um, I killed two dragons. I also killed two dragons. Um, those dragon incantations are overpowered. Yeah. Can I just say, I was just hanging out in the swamp, going to see. <laughs> I saw like all these guys just. Around this campfire, and was like, "Oh, hey, I'm gonna go kill them and get some level up." And then I saw this twinkle in the distance, I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And all of a sudden, the twinkle just turns into a dragon in my face. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> and I died. Yeah. And then when I went back, he was sitting there, uh, guarding the little tree thing I leave when I die. And I was like, "Oh, great! I'm not getting those that back." Yeah. Very quick, maybe. Yeah. I also I killed more god. The Omen yeah. King. My girlfriend's oh. on that right now. <laughs> and Lindell. You know, I haven't gotten that far. I've, like, I'm doing every single optional dungeon in this map before I go do anything This else. game is freaking huge, especially with its open world. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. I hate the Erd Tree avatars so much. I the hate them. The Erd Tree avatar? Uh, they look like, um, walking trees with cordyceps mushroom heads, uh, and they shoot holy 
seeking arrows. I basically played ring around the tree today um, with it <laughs> for like 20 minutes. <sighs> so I just got this new spell that I have to say is quite powerful. What's it called again? Nope. Intermittent magic. Okay. So, we got you guys are skiing across this glacier, and um, another day goes by. And I can mean, somebody yes. give me. Can somebody roll me a d6. A d6. Oh. I'll do it. Boogie. Okay. A five. You're going in like a northeastern direction, skiing, uh, skiing at pretty high speed, and then you see something uh, sticking out, just like out of the uh, the shards, the shards in the dis in the distance. Instead of like doing that at an angle like the the shards of ice usually are, this one's just straight up. We all notice and, that. Yeah. Oh uh, well, Henbane does because she rolled, and it seems to be is a that... distance away. Uh oh, I'm getting flashbacks to a Titanic. Is that what we're looking for, Captain? Do... Ice flares don't usually stick up like that, right? No, they don't, lass. But it's good enough to check out. And he throws the wheel into that direction, and the uh, the the swing arm flips to the other side of the ship and winds change as you head in that direction in a, in about an hour or two uh you you see it this large spire of ice uh uh like sticking out of the water um also around it is just this this uh this quaint ecosystem Probably the first time you've ever seen creatures here. Uh, you see, every once in a while, a killer whale will pop out, uh, pop out of the water and go back in. Uh, seals seem to be just comfortably laying on onto to, to some small glaciers. You even see a polar bear or two just hanging out with a with a swarm of penguins. Nothing seems to be attacking you or being vicious towards each other. And then you see the spire kind of end into the cloud cover, the the clouds overhead. Is this it? Um, I would say this is this is it. Yeah. Uh, do we anchor here? That's a that's a good idea. <laughs> and then he yells, "Way anchor!" <laughs> and then the guy on the front of the ship just kind of lets go of the anchor, and uh, it it falls down into the water. Uh, yeah. Ship stops with a sudden jolt and you uh, guys before we get off limb that's not no animals aren't supposed to act like that right like, like what dogs and cats living together pretty sure polar bears would eat penguins and orcas might eat seals yeah Ooh. that seems un Possibly. that don't seem right our guys are terrifying. I'm gonna get it on the land now. <clears throat> I just... If they are magically subdued <clears throat> creatures, I think perhaps we should not undo whatever magic is subduing. Would petting them undo it? Um, Probably. No, I don't no. know. <laughs> Please don't pet polar bears. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I look over there. It's a polar bear. I'm gonna go pet it. <laughs> I'm gonna go pet it. Okay. I'm probably gonna die. I'd like to roll a nature check to see if there would be a plausible reason and biologically for this to be congregated here. All right. Give me a nature check. Plausibly, all these creatures should be killing each other. There's certainly this, something off about this situation. There is uh this this area is a, a a frozen wasteland to say the least and food is scarce. So they should be eating each other and you don't know why they're not. And they're all fat and happy? They're and not they're fat and happy, be? but they don't look they don't look famished if that's what you're asking. Yeah. They're more Are they real? They are real. 
Okay. <laughs> Try the the polar bear doesn't like seem to be scared of you, and he doesn't he doesn't react to your uh, to your presence really. And um, fuck, some of the penguins have literally jumped onto the ship. Oh, Magical oh. or not, there's been intervention in the ecosystem yeah. here. Okay, I'm gonna talk to one of the penguins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The one uh, that, that hopped onto the ship. Did you uh, all right. not get enough Hel oxygen, Yorick? Hello, it... penguin. Yeah. <laughs> My best penguin noise. Okay. And I'm going to cast Comprehend Languages in Universal Speech. Hi, loser. Uh, I didn't. I didn't quite get that. Could you? Could you say that again? Uh, does does that work with uh, animals? I can choose I five mean... creatures. Oh, five creatures. Okay, cool. Um, I guess he'll just say to you, um, yo, that <laughs> boat. Thanks. Uh, you guys seem to be getting along really well. Uh, is everything okay? Oh, yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> sure. Uh, can I make an insight check on a penguin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, cool. Uh, okay. They're chilling. Eleven. Eleven. Uh, with an eleven, you definitely—it's—it's it's hard to read because you're trying to read a penguin, and you've—this yeah, <laughs> is the I'm first time you've had a conversation with one. Sure. <laughs> because everyone else just sees me. <laughs> like, all right. Well, uh, any idea what the big tall tower thing is over there i mean oh that's um that's um artilock's place who artilock Artilock knows of artilock are, are you are you on good terms with artilock oh artilock's great though a little talkative interesting i happen to like talkative people that's well, good. Uh, good he'll uh, probably like you uh -huh. yeah yeah, okay. Um, you know, I or, I, I, I or she, I don't it, her, her his their thing is a little weird. Okay. Any chance that Artilock has anything to do with why you guys are so friendly? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, I mean okay. they they uh they're just kinda like my zone is a non eaten and other animal zone, so oh. don't Please don't fuck around, or else you'll find out. Sure. Not eating, not eating any other animals, and I peel back a can of sardines. Any other animals? I mean, they're already. De he said no killing, so if they're <laughs> not already dead, give me the fish. Give me the fish. Okay. Give me the fish. <laughs> Thanks for the information. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly pulls out a knife. Yeah. Give me the fish. <laughs> <laughs> I give him the sardines. <laughs> he said no killing. There, he didn't say not to maim you. I pull up my own small knife. It's <laughs> like, oh, oh, I, I, yeah. I see. Uh, uh, I fucked uh, around uh, and found out. We speak the same language. Enjoy the sardines. He just take, kind of takes the sardines and starts uh, slopping them down. And I report to the others. Yeah, this is uh, belongs to somebody named Artilock, and I guess this is kind of a ceasefire zone. That's probably um, the most weirdest thing I've ever seen you do, we were what, you, what, what? you didn't inquire as to what Artilock was. I know that its gender is in question. Um, huh? Is so there... they, they, they didn't use very strict pronouns. Mm. So they, they don't know if it's a guy magic? or a girl. It's something magical. It's very likely to be the dragon we were discussing. Oh. Uh, oh. Why would the dragon make it a no kill zone on its island? Might be a friendly dragon. Wait, and then I talk to the penguin again because I can do that for an hour. <laughs> um, um, oh. Is, uh, is Artilog a dragon? Uh, yeah. They're oh. a big ass, big ass white, clear. I don't know. They're just big dragon. Okay, are they kind of woolly at all? Like, no, no, I don't. Don't remember 
they they don't have any fur, but yeah, they're just they're just big, really cool. really big. And I report, uh, yeah, the penguin says that it is in fact a dragon. Does does the dragon eat folks like us? Penguin doesn't asking... understand you. <laughs> no, I know. I'm asking Leoric. <laughs> hey, hey, penguin, does the does the dragon eat humans? Not that I know, no, but like when maybe when they uh maybe when they try to maybe in self defense, but okay. oh. but they'll probably most likely want to just talk to you. What's the penguin's oh. name? That was a lot of mess. What did it say? Penguin, uh, my my friend wants to know your name. Oh, Pe Pepper. <laughs> Pepper right. the penguin. This is... <laughs> Professor, this is Pepper the penguin. Tell the penguin, and... uh, hi, my name is Professor Hibatius Gryffindor, PhD. Nice to meet you. Hey, penguin, this is <laughs> Hibatius Gryffindor, PhD. And uh, they, they say, nice, nice to meet you. The fuck's a PhD? <laughs> it's, uh, and it's this... In... <laughs> I'm looking it's at the penguin story. like... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, penguin, well, you're cool. Why don't you just stick around on the ship indefinitely all right cool. all right and you know i'll i'll, I'll give you the whole skinny and i look back at it um it sounds like this dragon might not be the kind of raw kind of kind of dragon he, that oh, this is a talking time. dragon Next, this is right, probably. the dragon that likes to talk apparently wow Seems to be uh, your kind of zone, Lord. York. <laughs> Are you drunk? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drink a little something to keep myself warm. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are we slurring? <laughs> Damn, do I need to get more of this? Like, hold on. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so. Friendly dragons? I guess that's kind of a nice change of pace. Yeah. I don't think the penguin has any has any knowledge of like metal versus non-metal, do they? Would that be too complex of a question for a penguin? Because if it's well, a metallic dragon, is, that's is, a very are penguins colorblind? Maybe he could tell us what color it is. <laughs> a color hey, penguin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What you want? They want to know what color the dragon. We've had a lot of run-ins with dragons of various colors lately, and we're curious if you knew what color was. Okay. If it was shiny. Couple, couple of questions. Sure. What is color? <laughs> is it like okay. black, white, or gray? Because I just see, you know. Mm -hmm. Is it either black or white? Uh. Heart, heart, sometimes you can see right through it, them. Like, okay. Like, oh, they're, like they're almost invisible, but they're not. Neat. Okay. And I'm like, sometimes the penguin swears that you can see right through them. Like if they were translucent. I'm going to pull my Professor Orb. <laughs> 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 professor Double Dorb. I need your help. Oh my god. All right, all right. What, what, uh, what do you need me for? Also, where's my monocle? See this penguin here? This penguin yeah, has informed yeah, us it? that there's a see-through dragon in that spire. What kind of dragon would that sound like? <laughs> uh, he has a plus Hold 11 on. to our combo. That's a brand new sentence. You got this information from a penguin. <clears throat> Effort. He the orb gets a twenty three to figure out what kind of fucking dragon this is. <laughs> right, right, all right. So I've heard of a few different kinds of dragons of the multiverse. Um, where are we? What what what's our what's our? Um, I take out um, the map and I show it to the orb. Environment like right now. I show him around. Ice. ice. No. Oh, <laughs> ice. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, so my uh, theories are: it could be a boreal dragon, it could be a, uh, a a white dragon, it could be a silver dragon, or it could be a crystal dragon. 
See, I was gonna say so I was thinking it was like an ice dragon, like a crystal ice dragon. But I mean, that was my guess. But I wanted to confer with you. Of course, you did. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. That I jumped oh, back in the bag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in the bag. <laughs> so, did they say something about boreal dragons? There is a boreal dragon, but we ruled that out, I think, because boreal dragons supp are supposed to have fur, according to my notes. Yeah. I don't Maybe. think he'd be fond of the other creatures, either. Except for lunch. Uh, okay. I want to say that this is likely a crystalline dragon of some kind, but would I know the alignment of a crystalline dragon? Give me an arcana check. <laughs> Professor Gryffindor will think for himself on this one. <laughs> Time. We can make our way oh. towards the spire and make sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. Yeah, it sounds like it's just the talkative person. You do dragon. You do see the the uh, the part of the uh, the glacier, the giant spired glacier that it, there's a trail leading up to, like almost almost like a carved walkway going up. And then across this ice bridge, and then up the great main spire. I believe we should be walking and talking. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Vamos. Did you just speak what? Spanish at me? <laughs> you speak. You speak Elvish at me. <laughs> does, does Elvish sound like Spanish? Ew. Does now. What do I say? Je ne sais pas. Wait a minute. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. In your head. I can talk all the talks. <laughs> so multilingual. Oh. A polyglot, as they say. Oh, there we are. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, our, what's our marching order? Do we need a marching order? I would say um, so, just in case. Well, Lim and I are the best at looking for stuff. <clears throat> Uh -huh. Yeah, but you and I are the best tankers. <clears throat> I mean, I'm a tankyish. Yeah, Alim's got a shield. I don't even have on armor. Hell, even I'm the best uh, looking. Oh yeah, I think I'm just like <laughs> I completely forget if we can crib a door like max your back. Let's only get like a twenty AC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, the wizard, and well, I think I'm the tankiest on the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can I don't care first. who goes first as long as it's not me. <laughs> um. Yes. And then, Bon, do. why don't you go in the back? And then that way we've got... Pun we've got uh, meat shields on both sides. Sure. Meat shields on both Just sides. Just how I like it. <laughs> a meat sandwich. Meat. All around me. My dream. Meat shields <laughs> on both sides? See, I was being sarcastic, Gryffindor. <laughs> Were you? <laughs> <laughs> don't leave me to be the only meat in this sandwich. Uh, I as you guys so many questions about your dating history, <laughs> As you guys gain altitude, you guys go through this thick cloud layer and you pop out to the other side, kind of like where you guys are right now, like sticking an, an ice bridge sticking out of the uh, the clouds, and you see uh, a brilliant night sky above you. Wasn't it daytime a second ago? Yeah, yeah, it was. Is it a night nice sky in that, like, you can see space because there's no clouds and no light pollution? Or is it, like, night-night? It's because you could see, you could see, definitely see all the stars. You see even, uh, like, uh, just the, the, uh, for all intents and purposes, the galaxy that you are in. Uh, like, all the, the thousands of uh, the stars that make up. An, an actual night sky on uh, no light pollution, uh, nothing, no clouds, just uh, you and sudden darkness. What kind of who? Something is this? here has halted the Rayleigh scattering in the atmosphere. It's a lot of fancy words. <laughs> Can't really powerful wizards like make their own towers that have like. I thought I read it in a book. Are you suggesting but... that this is just one big pocket dimension? Yeah. I don't believe so. I don't think... I wouldn't have... I'm sure I would have noticed. <laughs> I kind of have to agree with the girlfriend door here. Okay. 
I have no other explanation for why it's suddenly nighttime. Maybe it's just an illusion. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe not a pocket dimension, but maybe B just got transported somewhere else, teleported somewhere else. You want me to run back down the stairs and see if it's still daytime down there? You're kind of slow. Wouldn't it take a while? Oh. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like drops for a second. <laughs> That's so rude. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was just... Just kind of yeah, twiddling his hands together. <laughs> I, I thought I was the one with Victor, the vicious mockery. <laughs> Yeah, dang. You know, Henvane, I think you'll cause more damage trying to console him. Let's just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> My wings droop. I, feel really... I, didn't, I didn't mean to be insulting on purpose. <laughs> I just uh, thought you read a whole book about people. <laughs> no. Oh, no. There's a difference dreams. between reading the book and then putting it into practice. Uh, fair, you know, fair enough, Lem. That's a wise thing to say. All right, you guys can <laughs> keep going Behind as fast as you'd like. Do, 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 do. Now you notice in this area the stars <coughs> are uh, like like um, large boards or uh, balls of fire in the sky. Large balls of fire. No, um, they're uh, large boards of uh, just like made from ice with various carvings like literally almost with a nail carved into them of uh different star charts uh different uh kind of anomalies throughout this person's viewing of the sky above like and they're all in draconic Oh, I, my comprehend language isn't still a thing. Yeah, so you can definitely read them. Thank God, it's, it's, all, okay, cool. it's, it's all star charts <laughs> like uh, anomaly. What the hell is what the hell is this bright purple thing in the sky? Uh, why why is it this star star pattern in this shape rather than this shape? Um, uh, is our sun just a giant ball of gas, a flaming gas? Things like that. Looks like the muttering of a madman. I can speak Draconic, so I can read it, and after taking a close look at these things, I'd like to take out my dragon-touched focus and kind of close my eyes looking into a star chart and um, activate legend lore. Whoa. And as I walk through the hallway... um, I have this divination uh, within my mind generating uh, visions of what everything here means and the lore behind it. Behind the star chart? Well, behind, like, what is this place? Or who, who do I think in legend lore would reside here based on these star charts, based on the draconic writing, the architecture, where it is, the fact that it's probably a dragon, and it's like, add all these pieces together, and I'm trying to figure it out using divination. Alright, so you take ten minutes to do this? Um, oh. I, I thought it lasted for ten minutes. I'm gonna ask the group, what do you think about this? <laughs> I don't know. This dragon acts a lot like you, if you were a dragon. I mean, it's very inquisitive. I'll probably cast this. If we don't figure this out by the end of the day, I'll do this. All right. Yeah, because um, when I make the dome, I'll probably do that. All right. All right. Uh, the the spires continue forward. Mm. Just in my head, I'm like, does Aurelian soul live here? <laughs> yep. <laughs> mm, Two path. Uh, well, technically three. In here, you see like almost a modest home. Um, 
Whereas around this area, you see uh, another chart. Uh, you do see there's been a lot of movement here. And you hear uh, almost like muttering <clears throat> in Draconic coming from this direction. <coughs> I might say modest home in this area, but it's not modest. You see like that fancy ass dining table that can seat up to like 12 people, a, uh, uh, an armchair, uh, a uh, books and books and books, like, like an entire library. Uh, uh, over in this area, and in true dragon fashion, a massive pile of gold. Oh. Well, we're in the right place. Is there something the to knock on? The dragon might be in human form. Maybe. Perception check. Alright, give me a perception check. 25. Ooh. 25. You hear, uh, in this direction, you hear, like, uh, something big moving. I'm gonna ask Ezra. Yeah? There's nothing to be scared of here, I assure you. But I do need you to wander in that direction. Let me know what you see. Don't be alarmed. No. There's Whoop. nothing that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, uh, going around, uh, going around, kind of like on three three legs because he's holding something in his other palm, in his, his other hand. He's just hopping, uh, staring at it, and you see at the end of his like large dragon snout is a set of gla glasses, and he's just going. Oh, I've discovered more star charts, and uh, something's a bit of more of the. And then he sees you and goes. Drop right, what I'm he's holding. Like, I'm gonna like pull uh, Henbane back a little bit just in case he doesn't he doesn't get stepped on. Okay. And to pull, it uh, like takes off his glasses and lets them hang around his large neck, and then goes visitors, and then <laughs> just like in a cloud of uh, pink dust. <laughs> Uh, turns into, uh, he's got, or they've got long white hair that's almost, uh, that shines brilliantly almost in the, uh, the, the starlight. Uh, he, they snap their fingers and then whoo, the place lights up with, um, with torchlight. What kind and of dragon they, is witness? <laughs> well, they move over to here and motion to the table and go, please take a seat, take a seat. I haven't had visitors in such a long time. This is quite a, uh, a lovely dragon. I'm gonna go sit down. <laughs> I'm gonna walk next to Ezra and be like, I'm really sorry. Uh, as I pass by the dragon, I hope I'm not too slow getting to my seat. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna sit next to you, and then I don't because I feel really bad, and I'll sit on the very far corner of the table by myself. And um, sort of wrap my wings around me like a really sad blanket because I feel like an asshole. <laughs> oh, wow! There's there's some history with you lot. Um, hello, Hi. my name's Adalok. <laughs> Adalok, how are you? Uh, we met Pepper outside. Uh, oh, oh, maybe oh my good friend Pepper. Y yes. How is he? It's been a while since I've seen him. I've kind of been cooped up up here doing... They were doing doing well, enjoying some sardines, it seemed. Good for, good for them. Uh, but I, I'm so rude, I don't know any of your names. Got Fine. Since I spoke first. My name's uh, Leoric. 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 Yeah. I like the sound of that. It is good to meet you, Leoric. You and I both. Pleasure. How about you, Sir Silver Dragon, who looks oddly familiar? Uh, my name is Vaughn, and please don't... Not... Yeah, um, yes, I am Silver Dragon. I'm with these <laughs> lab, my job is make sure they don't die. 
Okay, making sure they don't die. Good, good, good work. Um, the sir, old elf. Can I call you grandfather? I've never had a grandfather before. Well, uh, my name is Hyvacious Gryffindor, professor, PhD, and draconologist extraordinaire. Ooh. I know much about your people. My my people? You know a lot about crystal dragons? Absolutely, I do. Um, I'm totally not talking out of my ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. I have a feeling I should not trust you, but um, I it has been a, such a long time since I've actually had a conversation with a normal normal human being that I will let it slide. Please don't call me um, human. <laughs> okay, humanoid. How about that? Oh, um, that even worse. <laughs> Don't mind him. He Mr. Mr. Shrooms, by the looks of it, you have <laughs> mushrooms growing out of your shoulders. Do you know that? Yes. Yes, you're aware of the mushrooms growing out of your shoulders. Yes, my name is Mycelium, but you can call me Lem. Fascinating. Lem. Sir Lem. Yes. Mr. Lem? Uh, just Lem is fine. Just Lem. Just Lem. Interesting. And, um, Lem. No, just in front of it. Lem. Okay. Lem. Lem is my name. Yes. Lem. Right. Interesting. It's very, very interesting. You are, uh, you are a furbolg? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. I'm and... not really of these lands, but yes. Yes, this place is awfully chilly. Not very good for growing mushrooms, unless it's, you know, the cold variety. Oh, I meant this continent. I'm not from here. I'm from a far off place. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Um, how about you, Mr. That is an awfully colorful outfit. Ezra, um, Ezra Aravan, uh, though Mr. Aravan is my father, uh, pleasure to meet you, Mr., um, or Mrs. Dragon. It's, uh, either or is fine. I don't really choose a preference. I'm, I'm merely me. Well, it's nice to meet you. All right, Sir uh, Ezra. I I sense something in you. Something you have a connection to the far realm. No, the mindscape. Interesting. I'll have to talk to you about it more. And then Miss Tiefling, you seem interest. You seem a little hurt, though. Only by myself. Um. It's a common failing for oh. me. Uh, um, I shrug inside my wings, so it's just like the cocoon of my wings goes up and then back down. Uh, I'm I'm Henbane. You can call me Henny. Henbane, Henny, interesting. Um, may I ask? You look like the cross between a Shaolin monk and a librarian. Uh, well. Yes. I'm both a monk and a librarian. A monk librarian. Interesting. So, what brings what brings all of you to my doorstep? As much as I want to uh I want to indulge into your your story. What brings you here? Gets GMO. like uncomfortably close. Tiamat brings us here. And then his his mood kind of like it goes from a like a, a joyful smile to like a mm, <laughs> almost frown. Just like Tiamat brings you here. Wonderful. Stopping. Well, stopping not, not like... necessarily a bad turn, or like we're trying to stop her from coming back. Yeah. Oh, oh. I mean, fuck. I I, just, I do not like listening about or hearing about the world's problems. The so-called the mother of dragons. Well, unfortunately, that is the reason why we're here, so I'm sorry, but we are going to talk about it. All right, all right. We Fine. need to stop her from coming back, and if you don't like her, then maybe you can help us. I I will do whatever I can to make sure she stays in the Nine Hells. As do we all. But why do you need me? We're looking Professor. for the Drake Horn. For Drake? The Drake Horn? 
Yeah, they blew it south of Baldur's Gate. That's what that annoying ago. noise was. All right, I did not. I would did not know that the Drake horn was been sounded. Great, great. That sounds wonderful. Uh, you would not. Very uh, sarcastic. Hmm. That sounded very sarcastic. It is very sarcastic. I do not like the idea of them blowing the Drake horn. That's why I have a migraine, or had a migraine. It's been a it's been a while since I blew it, but. But what about each one of you individually? What are you looking to get out of this? You all want to stop Tiamat, I get that, but what is it that what you each of you want, really? You said something about a mindscape. I've tried to find people who have my gift or try and find some better understanding of what it is uh, and your gift what is it what can, what is it that you can do i uh take out a hand manifest a knife in it another one and just start juggling them oh fascinating <laughs> thank you I, I i worked for a long time as an entertainer um i can manifest my imagination i suppose i don't know much about it that must be it so uh, uh you don't know much of the mindscape. I know mortals don't really like to hear about it. Um, it's more like a, a collective unconscious. Every every being creates a uh, has a connection, technically, to the mindscape. But you, yours is unnaturally strong. So being able to summon things from your very imagination that's a, that's a great feat um, but I do not know why you have such a strong connection to the mindscape have you ever heard or met of an amethyst dragon I had heard um, that they might have possessed a similar power I've been I've been known to talk to amethyst dragons though I've been alone for Lord, how long has it been? He looks at a calendar and then flips it back down and it's just a couple thousand years. Well, hope. I hope to meet one someday. I can... I will try to point one towards you if I uh, ever meet one again. I still have like a couple thousand years, more years to go, so... I, I hope I'm around at that point. But thank you. All right. But, uh, so you're looking for the Drake Horn. You know, not too long ago, another dragon by the name of Aaron, Aaron Thantor calls himself the Great Old, or, uh, Old White Death. Uh, Wait. he came, not, came to my tower not too long ago, demanding that I uh, joined this cult of his and other things. Fortunately, I'm much older than him, so I was able to scare <laughs> him off. Unfortunately, he is still here in the shard, in the uh, the the uh, the shards. So, <clears throat> is it him you were looking for, or his domain? We. We're told that a, a member of the Arcane Brotherhood had a leash where the Dracon had come and that they were up here looking for it on a glacial island with fire. So we oh. thought that that was this. Nope, this is, this, is my, uh, this is my tower. This is where I come to... Well, this is where I live, for one. Uh, mm -hmm. You've seen my treasure hoard. And he points to, points to the massive pile of gold. And Very lovely. Here. Yeah, nice, nice hoard. Thank you, thank you. I'm very proud of my treasure hoard, though it seems a little small compared to everyone else's. But uh, I also have my star charts, and my uh, I've I've was able to tweak a darkness spell, so that way I have like permanent night up here. Hmm. hmm. Very cool, actually. Would this uh, visitor of yours 
happen to be a boreal dragon? Uh, I mean, I did was visited by a boreal dragon, but I was also visited by red tiefling, something the crimson. I don't Mad remember her. Cat. Yes, but she actually was looking for the boreal dragon, and then there was this whole talk about the drake horn. Yeah, it's just they went. I know where Aranthor's uh, Aranthor Arathantor is. Uh, I know. I know where his uh, lair lies, and I definitely think that that's probably what you're looking for. Since she went there next. Arathantor is a white dragon. He's a boreal dragon. Oh, that's the boreal. Uh, and the other one? Uh, the other one. There isn't another dragon. I'm the other dragon. <laughs> okay, I was getting lost in this story. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I get lost in conversation. It just happens sometimes. So you're an but astrologist. I am an astrologist. And, or uh, an astronomer. <laughs> an astronomer? Both. Why not? <laughs> Are you a Cancer or a Libra? <laughs> Uh, I'm a Leo. I have no idea what any of that means, but... <laughs> You're not an astrologist if you don't know what any of that means. <laughs> no, I'm not an astrologist. I'm an astronomer, because the fucking Feyren has three moons, and I'm trying to figure out why. Is it true that the stars actually tell one's features? future? Mm, no. Oh. I hear a lot of tales on that. It also tell dictates how they are born. Mm, no doesn't dictate how one is born. I mean, it dictates... It's pretty good at keeping time and navigating, but the uh, greater mysteries are lost to me. I'm There are some stars, some nights in the sky that just blink out. And then some that uh, were an area of darkness where you've seen nothing there. It was just suddenly a star. Bright light. It's fascinating, really. Uh, what's fascinating to me is what about the apparition? Where do you think they come from? They come from the far realm. The far realm is not like more like up there too. No, that's not up there. That's a, literally a different plane of existence. Hmm. Okay. I believe what you're looking for. I call that up there is the astral sea. That's it. Like all these strange, like, alien creatures, like, tentacles on their faces. What, yeah, like, tentacles. Like, brains or something? Tentacles sometimes, like, uh, cosmic horrors, the likes of which our minds cannot comprehend. Mm, stuff like that. Can't comprehend until they come to eat you. Until they hmm. come to eat you. Uh, I have a running theory that we're actually all, uh, uh, dreams of some sort of tentacle creature that once it wakes up it's going to eat us this is what happens when you live for too long uh, yeah <laughs> yeah huh. but uh the boreal dragon's lair arathantor fuck that name is hard to say mm -hmm. he is uh west of here a couple of days in fact he is probably the only island in the sea of shards uh, you'll find it because it is a volcano. A volcano? A volcano. Granted, it's a volcano in a glacier, but it's still a volcano. I think we got That's a lead. Yeah. I was like, they want we have. But I don't know if finding Arathantor will necessarily find us the Arcane Brotherhood directly, will it? No. Isn't the Arcane Brotherhood in Luskin? <laughs> like, the host true? tower? Did we already pass that lead? Uh, well, I, th we I thought you were following a Macath the Crimson. Yes, a member of the yeah. Arcane Brotherhood who went up here, correct. Ah. Ah. Interesting. What were you doing before you met me? Uh, you said you were stopping Tiamat. <laughs> How is she coming back? Oh, I have many questions. How is she coming back? <laughs> Why is she coming back? Um, blood and gold, assholes. Blood and gold, assholes. Yeah, uh, there's a dragon cult and red wizards. Okay, cool. Let dragon it... cult and red wizards. Are you familiar with the relic masks? The relic masks. Yes, I am. That white, blue, green, red, and black one. 
Supposedly, you take them to uh, you take them to a certain place in Feyrun. I don't remember where, but you take it to a certain place of Feyrun, that uh, and then you kill a lot of people, sacrifice a lot of gold, and you bring Tiamat back from the um, from the Nine Hells. See, you're catching up quick. Yeah, they have the masks. They have the masks. Wonderful. And the golden easy, and the people that's easy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I guess if you're going to need any place to stay, my place is open, though I don't know. Uh, I don't have any much for accommodations. I really don't have food. Maybe I should have done something about it. But uh, uh, if you need any help of sorts, feel free. Any gestures to his treasure hoard, feel free to just grab a handful of gold and put it in your pack. I've got plenty. Literally, the uh, literally the walls are filled with the stuff, and he smashes his hand against the wall, and it cracks a little bit, uh, and you see like glints of gold fall out, fall out of the ice that's smashed into them. That is a very philanthropic dragon. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm more attached. If you touch my fucking star charts, I will crush. I will crush you with every <laughs> form of my being. But the gold is fine. I don't really need it. Not the spend it. star charts. Uh, okay. I get it from the desk. My, my chair. <laughs> get up from your chair, open your bag of holding, and just shove it in there. <laughs> <laughs> like the vacuum to get up all the gold. <laughs> I would just like to find a very nice gemstone. Not of any, just one that looks really pretty. It's very, uh, it's very easy to find. All the gemstones here are uh, perfect cut and various varies in color. What, uh, what, what kind of gemstone would you want? Um, I would like to find a yellow diamond. A yellow diamond. I could. Uh, pretty easy to do. You just like uh, find uh, about a yellow diamond, almost the size of your fist. Perfect. Probably worth around 5,000 gold. In case you wanted to use it for a spell component. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, everyone else, uh, well, everyone, you guys can get upwards of about uh, 7,000 gold. Each. Until the, the Mr. pile is gone. <laughs> Wow, you literally took all my gold. <laughs> I'm joking, I can get more. Horseshoes. Purple horseshoes? Somebody asked for yellow diamonds. I wanted purple horseshoes. <laughs> okay, alright. You want purple horseshoes. Um... You didn't have any, so I took your gold. Oh, okay. Is there... Okay. <laughs> is, there, is there what? I was just going to say, are there purple gems? Cause, I mean, I'm sure at some point I can just fabricate them into a horseshoe. But if you're just going to give them a horseshoe, you know, fuck that. Uh, can you just look up Lucky Charms to understand what I'm talking about? Lucky Charms? Oh. How dare you. Oh, for Zan Blue Moon. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that is where I would like to actually end the session for today. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Where you guys uh, meet Adalok. Oh, yeah. The dragon. I do think nice. when, when he was talking about the cosmic cores, Penny, you hear in your head, I'm... I, I totally forgive you, just in case anything were to randomly come down and, and tentacle our brains away. I want you to know that you're my friend, and I, I, I can't be mad at you. <laughs> you see visible... It's visible relief. Major image. A tentacle appears out of the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cthulhu wakes up. <laughs> oh, no!